Welcome to Kingdom Mirrors TV. On this channel, we post edifying content for your spirit and daily living. Kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your post notification to get notified each time we post. Thank you, stay blessed, and enjoy this video. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that there is a spirit realm and there is a physical realm. I'm teaching now. Please lend me your attention. The Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that there are various dimensions that man has the privilege of interacting with. And chiefest among them is the realm of the spirit or what we know from our earth standpoint to be the invisible realm. And then the physical realm or the material realm that we call the visible realm. Hallelujah. This is very important. Romans chapter 1 and verse 20, please. Man has the privilege and the liberty of interacting with this realm. We have the advantage of the duality of realms. Romans 1 and verse 20 says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things which are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that we are without excuse. So he's saying that the things that are manifest are a testimony to the fact that there is a realm that birthed them. That everything physical, everything material is a testament that there is another kind of reality beyond the material realm. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. Very profound statement that Paul made to the church in Colossae. It says, for by him were all things created. Let's read together. That are in heaven. You see that now? and that are in earth, uh -huh. visible and invisible. One more time, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones, that means there are visible thrones, but there are invisible thrones. There are visible dominions, there are visible principalities, there are visible powers, but there are also invisible dimensions. That everything in the physical has its parallel in the realm of the spirit. Visible and invisible. Are we learning now? This is very important. Last scripture, Matthew chapter 3, 16 to 17. This is Jesus now. Jesus is in the physical realm, having become flesh. The Bible says when Jesus was baptized, they had an experience they had never had. The people there, not just Jesus. The Bible says straightway he came out of a physical water and the heavens were open and he saw the Spirit of God not just descending from the sky, descending from that invisible realm that opened through the atmosphere. The Bible says they saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him, verse 17, and a voice the voice did not speak from a radio station. The voice was not one of the people there. An invisible voice. But then it, it, it echoed through a visible realm. And the people heard it. This is my beloved son. Meaning that the voice spoke a language that their minds could understand. In whom I am well pleased. So it is clear that there is a spirit realm. And there is an invisible, a, phys a physical realm. Listen, as simple as this sounds, you will never be able to manifest realities and that includes your destiny. If all you see and all you know is this three-dimensional realm, you are already disadvantaged for life. The consciousness, the awareness that there is a dimension, are we together? Above and beyond this physical realm already puts you at a vantage position. It is on this one reality that whether you serve Satan or serve God, if you are to excel in your spirituality, there is a mandate upon you that you must believe the existence of the realm of the spirit and the supremacy of the realm of the spirit. That means its ability to superimpose 
upon the physical realm. This is powerful. It is the reason why we are not discouraged when we see physical things. Because of the awareness that there is a reality in the spirit that is higher and greater than what we see. Are we together? So you can see someone who has been plagued by sickness and you know that there are resources in the realm of the spirit that can be made available to that individual under a certain condition. My God, this is why you can see someone who is poor, dejected, and you come with that understanding that all that this man has is not all he can have. There are resources beyond the physical realm. The second thought that you need to know tonight is that realities are only made manifest. Realities are only made manifest when we learn how to transport these realities from the realm of the spirit to the physical realm. I'll take it again. Realities are only made manifest when we learn how to transport those realities from the realm of the spirit to the physical realm. That means those realities and those resources, whatever they are, they will do us no good provided they remain in the realm of the spirit. Are we together? We need to learn the spiritual technology that can translate those resources from the realm of the spirit to be made manifest. Someone tonight, you are hearing the real cure for poverty. You are hearing the real cure for all kinds of satanic oppression. You are hearing the real cure for manifesting your destiny. There are realities in the realm of the spirit. There are resources in the realm of the spirit beyond the imagination of the average person, beyond the imagination even of the saints. Our assignment is number one, to agree that they are there. Number two, to learn how to transport those realities. And this is my assignment tonight. Hallelujah. Watch this. How many of you know that once upon a time, and even until now, there are treasures beneath the earth where you are seated now? Only God knows how many treasures. Not even science can comprehensively exhaust the treasures and the mineral resources that are under the earth. Science is still learning. Are we together now? And there are resources under the earth. Now, whether you are aware or not, those resources are there. But whether they will become to your advantage has to do with your discovering their presence and knowing how to mine them from the earth. Are we together now? You can have a farm full of gold or diamond or iron ore or whatever it is and you can run around with that awareness. That awareness will not prosper you. Even though it's an advantage, you can tell everybody I have a plot of land or a hectare of land and I promise you I'm not lying. That land has within it gold, has within it diamond, has within it iron ore. In fact, you can even get a few people to help you test and they can say it's true. And yet you can remain dejected. You can remain poor and miserable. Because you must have the resources. Say resources. The intelligence to be able to mine it out. It says counsel is like deep waters. But a man of understanding will draw it out. Somebody is finding his way out finally. John chapter 1 and verse 14. The word became flesh. This scripture has inspired me for years. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Who are the us? Physical people. The word domiciled in the invisible realm through some technology found its way to have a material expression. And the Bible says we beheld. So it was not just a vision. When Jesus as the word became Jesus, the child, the baby, he was seen of men. He was seen of angels. You didn't need to be prophetic to see him. Once you were alive, you could see the baby wrapped up in a manger. They saw him as a teenager. They saw him when he grew to become an adult. Invisible things can become visible. 
invisible resources can be transported to become a system of advantage to the believer. And I'm praying for you. Everything God has placed in the realm of the spirit that is needed for your destiny actualization, but through ignorance is been waiting there for years. May you sustain the intelligence to make it manifest in the name of Jesus Christ. Sit down, please. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. Let's read NIV or the message translation. The Bible says, through faith. Can we have any? Okay. It says, by faith we understand. Watch this. That the universe was formed at God's command. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Can we have the message? Is that possible? MSG. It says, by faith, we see the world called into existence by God's word. What we see created by what we do not see. What we do not see is what created what we see. Did you get that now? What we do not see, the invisible realm, is what created this realm. This thing you call anointing, do you see it? Show me anointing. Are you going to lift a bottle of um, um, olive oil and show me? Is that anointing? Does a tree produce anointing? No. The anointing can only be trapped in a material vessel like a mantle or whatever. But where is that anointing? When the Bible says God anointed Solomon, where did it come from? Can you show me the remains of what fell on him? Yet you could not deny the effect. It fell on a physical man. He grew up and demonstrated intelligence. Are we together now? The things which appear, the crowds which appear, the resources which appear, the influence which appear, they are only a manifestation of realities that are available. Are we together now? And that if you know how to transport those realities, then you will live an invincible life of dominion even in your world today. When you lay hands on a sick person, you're not rubbing anything on your hands. What flows through you to that sick person? When you stretch your hands towards someone and he receives an impartation, where is the connection? What actually flows? From where? Invisible resources. But their reality can be proven in this realm. Here and now. When you speak to men and say in the name of Jesus, may God open the door. Can you show me the words? Where are the words? Can you hold it? So why do you lift your hands to say I receive? What are you receiving? Did you feel anything when you received? Yet you believe something rested on you. And you go out carrying that consciousness. And you return back rejoicing. Knowing sometimes the impact is so dramatic. That even your physical stature cannot hold the weight of what rests on you. Yes, it is invisible. These are transactions happening. Listen. They are spiritual transactions. You cannot see it. And yet your body attests to the fact that something is happening. How about the fire you feel? How about the warmth, the movement of the anointing in your body while the word is coming? Burning within your spirit like it did to the men at, um, at Emmaus. What is responsible for it? You think it's just sounds? Can a speaker make you that convicted? Can a mic make you that convicted? I'm just telling you that there are realities. You are here seated now. All you see is not all that is happening. If I ask you to describe all that is happening, you will say, I am listening to a man preaching. That is almost one over a hundred. There are many things happening. God is removing things. God is returning things. The Spirit of God is walking through angelic ministries, walking on the minds of people, just because you cannot see it. Are we together? As these words are coming, listen, the Lord is spreading these words by his spirit to people so that what is leaving me is not the same thing resting on you. There are things being added on that rest on others. That is why you will be hearing different things even though it's the same person communicating. The 
realm of the spirit, the wealth of resources. So when God speaks to you, he speaks with the consciousness of the vast resources that are available to back you. Whether you are aware of it or not, see that now. Now, if I ask you a question, assuming you are a multi-millionaire, and I ask you, are you a millionaire? You say yes. If I say, where is the money? You say it's in the bank. Which bank and where is it? You are as confident, yet the money is not with you. But you are confident that I know that I have one million naira or one million dollars or whatever in the bank. You can beat your chest and say, I know I'm a rich man. And have no pressure to prove it at all. You may put your hands in your pocket and bring out nothing. And yet nobody can dare tell you you are poor. So why do believers walk as though they are helpless? Simply because you touched your pocket and there was nothing physical there. Or your physical phone showed you zero, zero naira. And you use that to describe yourself. And heaven is saying, I, you are wasting potentials here. You do not understand the vast resources. So God helps you by coming to the, your dream life and showing you certain things that are available. You wake up and say, it's a lie. God can, can, is joking with me. Everything you see manifest in the life of the believer comes from somewhere. I want you to pay attention. I'm stimulating your creativity because the keys that I'm about to show you now, it will change your life forever. I tell you. Some of you will leave this place without any car, without anything, and yet you'll be jumping like a madman after this service because you will know that you have learned something. You have closed a door that Satan uses to discourage you and lie to you. Apostle, where are the members? They are first in the realm of the spirit. You are not able to see them there. That's why you will never see them physically. Where is the house? Where is the level in the spirit? Let me tell you the truth. Anything that ever manifests is because it found its parallel in the spirit. If it cannot find it there, it cannot be made manifest, including trouble. All kinds of troubles have their spiritual form. They can be pulled down from the realm of the spirit by the manipulation of spiritual laws, courtesy demons, and be made manifest. So men are manipulated mentally to act in a certain way that allows those laws to work against you. You call it tragedy. You call it all kinds of things. But there is an intelligent explanation to those things. Walk with me now. Hmm. There are two major challenges I wrote here with believers. And I want you to listen, please. As far as manifesting spiritual realities are concerned, there are two major challenges with believers. Number one, ignorance of the provisions. Right, please, I'll be slow enough for you to write. I need you to write this. Ignorance of the provisions and resources available to the believer in Christ. This is the first major challenge. Ignorance of the provisions. Ignorance of the resources available to the believer in Christ. This is the first challenge with believers. Ignorance of the provisions. Ignorance of the resources available to the believer in Christ. Two quick scriptures, 2 Peter 1 and verse 3. The first major challenge with believers as far as manifesting spiritual realities is concerned is we are largely ignorant that there are even provisions and resources beyond this realm. Real provisions available as a system of advantage to the believer. Here's what the Bible says. According as his divine power hath given unto us, how many things? All things that pertain unto life and the things that pertain unto godliness. All things that pertain unto life and all things that pertain unto godliness have been given unto us. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Ephesians 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ 
who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Please shout it after me. Say all spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings. One more time in concert. Say all spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings. So this is what Paul says has been given to us. That he's given to us all spiritual blessings. Another way to put it is all blessings. But they are spiritual in nature. Are we together? The first challenge is the challenge of ignorance of the provisions and the resources that are available to the believer in Christ. What is the second challenge? The second challenge is ignorance on how to convert those provisions to their material expressions. How to convert ignorance on how to convert those spiritual provisions to their material expressions for the profiting of the believer. I'll take it again. The second major challenge with believers is ignorance on how to convert the spiritual resources, the spiritual provisions that are available for us in Christ how to convert them to their material expressions for the profiting of the believer. Jesus put it powerful in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10. Matthew 6 and verse 10. He says, thy kingdom come. That invisible influence of your government, let it come by your will being done in this physical realm as it is in the immaterial realm. That means let realities be made manifest in this realm the same way it is in the realm of the spirit. Ignorance on how to convert these spiritual realities to translate them from just being spiritual resources. Listen, how many of you know that science and technology as we call it today is an attempt to show us that realities can be transported. Isn't it amazing that you can dig down to the earth, ladies and gentlemen, mine minerals that don't make sense, mine oil, a dark smelly paste of, of accumulation of all kinds of decompositions over many years and put them together and now begin to pass them through various processes. Out of those minerals will come your phone. Out of that oil will come the gas that powers your generator, powers your car, and whatever it is. So conversion is a possibility. Profiting does not happen at the point of discovery. Profiting happens at the point of conversion. Are we learning now? If I gave you one jerry can of a dark smelly substance called oil, it may not profit you so much until you go and pass it through a process that now distills everything and you can now get your fuel, as we call it, your gas, and get other things, byproducts from it. Many believers, number one, do not even know the provisions and the resources that are available. And for those who know, it just stops at knowing. Do you know healing is yours? Yes. Do you know abundance is yours? Yes. Do you know increase is yours? Yes. Do you know restoration is yours? Yes. Have you experienced it? No. Why? The problem is the knowledge of the technology that converts those realities. Man of God, you need to hear this. If not, you'll be frustrated in ministry. Businessman, you need to hear this. If not, you'll be frustrated. When you go to the place where they make cars, all you are going to see is an architectural design, a 3D representation of that car, and all the metallic resources that will put that car together. But you step out and give the people a few days, a few months, and you will come back and find a real car that you can enter and drive a real car. It was not a car they found under the earth. They found metals, but they were able to combine it in a way that produced cars now with such beauty and elegance. Imagine what can happen to your life when you know how to convert these spiritual resources. 
your life will become a wonder first to you and any other person who cares to see and may that be your testimony by this revelation, let ashes and shame and everything that has mocked God, let it fade out of your life and destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you will rise from this understanding and build mighty ministries for Jesus. Mighty evangelical platforms for Jesus. Mighty businesses with transcontinental value based on the things you are receiving. It's true.